Minnesota, we've got exchanges from the Iron Range, you know, right down to right down here. We're scattered throughout the state. Throughout the state. Um, just want to give you maybe a little bit of background. I think one of the you know, acronyms, there's a lot of acronyms in this industry, but half funding is kind of the topic we're talking about today. Um, and just take a step back and see what that means and what that's all about. Um, there's been a concept, yes? Why don't you come about 10 feet closer? Yeah, that might be better. Uh, there's been a concept in telecommunications for decades called universal service, this service available everywhere to everybody at an affordable price. Um, and the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission, has had a lot of programs to support that, especially in rural, isolated, high cost to serve areas. Um, they had a number of what they called universal service programs that gave money to companies whose cost to provide voice service was above the average. And that's been under, you know, they've had those programs for years. Um, and the way that was focused was, once again, they was targeted to companies who had the average cost higher than normal. So in general, that was the smaller rural companies that got that special subsidy, special plan to keep their rates affordable, cheap, and available everywhere. About uh, four years ago, in 2011, the Commission, Federal Communications Commission said they wanted to broaden that definition of universal service to include broadband, because they could see that that was becoming very important as well. So they decided to kind of change their focus from universal service being just voice to voice and broadband. And they wanted to come up with some way to get that out even into the high cost areas, high cost to serve areas. So they came up with this new program called the Connect America Fund, CAF, CAF. And what they wanted to do was change the focus of, instead of looking at high cost companies, they wanted to look at high cost areas because you know, the cost to provide service can vary a lot within a company. And of course, being the Federal Communications Commission, they came up with a computer model that estimated the cost to provide broadband. This was starting back in 2011. And at that point, the FCC said broadband was four megabytes per second download speed. So they came up with this computer model, and they had the model was designed to estimate the cost to provide broadband, four megabytes per second, per census block. Now, if you're familiar, the census blocks are relatively small areas um, within the country. I think there's something like 11 million of them in, in the United States. And of course, it varies a lot from the census block here in downtown Spring Valley to 15 miles away. But each census block, the model spit out a cost to provide broadband service. And the FCC said, great. Now we're going to set up a budget to send money to those uh, to support the expansion of broadband to those areas. They come up with an annual budget of about 1.8 billion dollars. Well, as you can imagine, when they total up the cost to provide broadband in all those census blocks, it was a lot more than 1.8 billion dollars a year. So they focused on kind of a sweet spot. They said census blocks that cost on their estimate between $52 a month and $198 a month to provide four megabytes of broadband service, they would provide funding out of this new CAF fund. Four megabits? Megabits. What did I say? Bytes. Bytes. Sorry. Megabits. Right. <laughs> Just 10 times. <laughs> so that's the, that's the program we're talking about now. Um, so it's, these are census block based again. The FCC identified census blocks where they estimated the cost to provide service was between 52 and 198 and whatever the model spits out, they give you support to, to build to those areas. So the short and sweet of it is for Minnesota, but there was about $85 million thank you, worth of funding required for those census <coughs> blocks. And those census blocks covered about 170,000 households. A little more than 170,000 households. So this is a six-year program, began in 2015, runs through 2020. Um, the SEC is making that CAF2 money available to, it turns out, just the larger carriers, because they kind of wanted to start this out first with the large carriers and then move to the small. Um, and this started this year. So $86 million a year 
of funding per year for essentially six years. The carriers, Frontier is one of those carriers, CenturyLink, um, Windstream in this state, and Consolidated, another larger carrier, um, are going to be building with that money. So by the end of 2020, we will have built and provided service to an additional 170,000 households in our service area that don't have it now. Now, in the meantime, the FCC says, you know what, broadband now is not 4 megabytes per second as we first suggested. It's going to be 10 megabytes. So we, Frontier and CenturyLink, are going to be building networks that provide 10 megabytes of service to all these customers or these customers in the identified census blocks. As I said, this is a six-year program, and the FCC has set up a certain schedule. We have to have 40% of the households built to by the end of 2017, 60 by the end of 2018, 80 by 2019, and all 100% by the end of 2020. So there's a progression here um, over the next five and a half, six years. Um, if you, I, hopefully you grab this hand out here, but just to get an idea when I'm talking about census blocks here, on the second page, you will see a couple of maps. And this one here on the top, it's got a bunch of green areas and a bunch of white areas. The green areas are those census blocks that fall in that sweet spot that the FCC will provide funding for. The white areas do not fall in that sweet spot for a couple of reasons. You'll notice Spring Valley right in the middle, that's all white. That area already has service at, it was four megabytes per second when the FCC did this. It already has service, so there's no funding necessary for that area. Yes, can I answer one thing? Yes. Yeah. Um, as Scott's talking about this, and he mentioned the 10 megabyte number, one of the misconceptions that I want to make sure people understand is that's a standard that's put out there, but these providers are not building 10 megabyte networks. Um, you may be in the farthest reaches of the fiber and you may get slow speeds because of the signal degradation, but I can tell you as a person who's terminated fiber, program routers, you can't go buy equipment today to run at 10 megabyte speeds. That's not what they're building. Um, so, I mean, when you hear that, it's just a standard. These network providers get it. They're going to build out the best networks they can to get ROI, and they're certainly not going to come in and build at the lowest of the threshold. That's just the farthest end. So I just want to make sure that's clear because people keep saying, oh, this is only 10 megabyte networks. No, no. This won't be 10 megabyte networks. This would be far above that because the technology is way, way ahead of that. So you said I just want 10 to megabyte rather than 10 megabit. I'm sorry, 10 megabit. I'm sorry. <laughs> Huge Thank difference. You. Yeah, there is. Right. Yeah, so 10 megabit. Uh, 10 megabit. Thank you. And just to, to build on that, this is an evolving thing. The FCC has recently said, you know, 10 megabits, <laughs> bytes, 10 megabytes. <laughs> Going forward, they want the, the standard to be 25. So, you know, it's kind of a it's kind of an evolving thing. But as the representative says, we're you know we're, we're going to be building something that's going to be hopefully not future proof, but at least aimed towards the, the future in these areas. Um, so I guess. The white areas here, and you see that on statewide maps, either there's already service there, or those places that were the estimate was that it would cost more than $200 a month to provide service. The FCC, well, we can't afford dealing with that now. We'll do something with that later. But So those areas are not half fundable, not eligible as well. Um, the other issue, and I guess... There's, at least from our perspective, from Frontier's perspective, this is a six-year project, so our engineers are busily trying to figure out how to stage all this and you know which areas are going to go first and which one we're going to do next year. So there's a lot of things up in flux in terms of the timing of all this. So we can really only kind of say, end game, here's what it's going to be at, at 2020, and we're going to get there over the, you know, over the next five years, but exactly when and how, I can't really say at this point. With that, I'll stop for any questions if there are any. Yeah. Given your outside plant, are you going to be GFAST? You're going to be fiber? You're going to be something else? Going to be radio? Um, I think in our case, and I, I'm not an engineer, so what I think we're doing in many cases is pushing fiber farther out into our network um, so that the, 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 the 
essentially that last copper loop that goes to the customer is getting shorter and shorter. Because the longer it is, the slower it is. Right, right. And that's, you know, that's the, the shorter you can make that copper loop, the, yeah. the better you're going to be. And I guess, there, you know, there may be situations where we do something different, but I think that's what we're looking okay. at at this point. Thank you, Scott. I think what I'll do, 